evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Paint Desk Ramblings. I'm joined tonight by two wonderful guests. Uh, we have the first time on the show, um, fresh from his first game in the, the UK's Masters, and uh, the co-host of the Paired, we Paired Weapons podcast, it's Kev. How are you Hello. doing? Hello! Very good, thank you, man. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, no... Uh, no. I've watched a few, so it's good to be here. Yeah, my pleasure. Happy to have you on. Um, <laughs> we're it's good also... to see other brush as well. We're not the only one. Yeah, I, I constantly lick my brush. Uh, that's, uh, mm, I get all, 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 all my nutrients from, from the, the brush. Uh, also, my, my, joining my, us... My issue is, is, uh, is actually licking the sculpting tool, and I'm told that that's really bad because of the toxic stuff that you have. <laughs> but I, I do it anyway. That, that one I haven't tried. Maybe I should try that too. Um, <laughs> but uh, as you, you just heard, also joining us tonight uh, is uh, uh, Henry P. Miller back on the show uh, from the Amber Time podcast, of course. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. I'll try to live through this pandemic, but yeah, I'm getting yeah. by. Yeah, what else can you do? So uh, tonight we will be chatting about uh, everything furry. So, the uh, Beasters <laughs> is what we'll be diving into. Another faction focus episode, so we will look at the at the, the background, the fluff, um, the miniatures, and ru the rules of this wonderful little faction. Or not so little, perhaps. Um, so, on that topic, uh, why don't we explore what, uh, your relationship relationship with, uh, with the Beasters, starting with you, Kev. So, um, I've only started the Beastos really this year, sort of, as lockdown begun. I've had some models for a long time. I've been planning to start the Beastos army, um, but just, you know, never got around to it. As said before, that it's very difficult to get the motivation to just start a new army because it's such a marathon task to get yeah. 4,500 points painted. It's just so daunting. It can be bothered. And when you've got tournaments every other month or whatever, you just want to paint the next thing for that. So lockdown was a perfect opportunity to start painting my beast herds. Um, and then as part of that, with like UB being the only way of getting any tournaments going, um, I don't need to have models painted. So that's pretty nice. So I thought it was a perfect time to get running around with the Beastie Boys. And uh, yeah, I've been having a lot of success with them, really. I found, found a really good oh, army. Don't play it down, Kev. You, you're in the Masters. I don't. Well, yeah, I've made it to the UK Masters. Like, first time I've ever used this army and i've done really really well so i so, snuck in there it's a steep place i was right at the bottom i just peeked in there <laughs> but but oh, clearly oh, they, they are overpowered than the the the, the oh this, yeah they must the, be the hurt. that's it <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Do, you, do you have to play in the masters with the army that you played in the tournaments to qualify in no i could have used any army um but it would have felt like a betrayal to the beast herds if i took anything <laughs> else <laughs> i'm only there because of them I just had one really good tournament where I came second, um, just because I had good matchups. You know, they're a very, like, you know, paper, scissors, stone army. There's certain armies that they can just absolutely smash off, and then there's others that it's just like running into a brick wall and you can do nothing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, just, they're quite matchup dependent, I find. All right. Uh, so, how about you, you Henry? Um, I'd say I, I would. I have a very different relationship to Kev. <laughs> with the beast heads. Um, I've I've been collecting a beast heads army for maybe about the same time, a little bit longer, I think, than Kev, maybe two years. And um, I, I did it because I I wanted to play with the army. I thought it was it was cool, like with the ambushers, and I just thought it was like a, sounded like a fun army to do. And um, I I didn't really know what models to choose. I didn't really have any models in mind because I it wasn't it wasn't the models that attracted me to the army. It was how they play. So I basically decided to try and do an army without using Games Workshop models. Yeah. Not because I'd have anything against Games Workshop, but more because I thought it would be an interesting challenge to to try yeah, and do it. And for sure, that, that that's a very very, very creative way to to um, to approach it by well, by limiting they're... yourself. A That's... tough army to not do GW models with. Yeah. Of the exactly. yeah. yeah. So, so that's that's been quite a challenge and something that I thought would be interesting to do. And yeah, and and it's been quite fun. I haven't really found like that many 
core options, but um, <laughs> we, I think we'll talk about that later on. Um, I haven't really been playing them that much. I think I've had maybe less than ten games with the Beast Herds. So I'm more of a I'm more know know more about the models and stuff rather than the rules. But uh, yeah, I, I I can I've had I've had a few games. I played some Centaur lists and it's it's fun. But I haven't really got much further than that because I've been working on my Dread Elves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, um, I, the reason I got into Beast Herds was because Chaos Warriors, well Warriors of Dark Gods, used to be able to take trolls. And I found some nice Minotaur models uh, on the Kickstarter by Zealot Miniatures. Um, so I got them. I was like, I'll use them as my trolls. And then the project <laughs> can the uh, trolls. And I was like, well, I've got about 16 Minotaurs. I might as well start a Beast Dead's army then, I guess. <laughs> and it just sort of spiraled from there. And I know a lot of people who have started Beast Dead's armies because of those Zealot Miniature Minotaurs, actually. They are really fantastic. Models. I mean, I, I've They're been really good. I've been tempted by them for sure. <laughs> <laughs> They're a bit uh, tough to squeeze on a 40 mil base, though. That's the only yeah, I can problem. Imagine. <laughs> uh, so, for myself, I don't have any experience playing Beast Arts uh, or painting them or anything. Um, I just uh, observed them from a distance. Uh, but it's a, it's a cool army. Uh, and as I said, I've been tempted at points, uh, at least. So there's always that. Um, but we will uh, dive on into the Hobby Spotlight then, I think. Uh, starting again with Kev, what are you working on? Uh, so at the moment, I've... Well, we did, um, over the pandemic, we did uh, tell the slow paint, paint as it was called. So it's like paint 2,000 points of... Uh, an army, so I started on the Beast Herds and I just finished that recently. I'll show you what I've just finished. So I did paint Ooh. this, the uh, <laughs> Matriarch. Yeah. Uh, from... Lovely model. She's massive. Like She just towers over other models. From Sealot Miniatures, um, right? Yeah, from Sealot yeah. Miniatures. I just finished her this week. So now I've done my 2,000 points, so I'm starting the rest of it. So I've decided to start on the Chariots. Uh, so unit free raiding chariots, sort of the core of the army. Um, so I'm started on the charioteers, who are um, like models I've converted myself from Games Workshops Untamed Beast, who's like uh, like a barbarian kind of modelly thing. Um, so I've chopped some of them up and whacked them on some GW bestigal legs and things, and uh, yeah, <laughs> nice. Got some of these very nice models. Who's painting them up? Cool. Awesome. Do you, do you stick them on round bases to paint them? Yeah, yeah, because I've got plenty of round bases. So I just yeah. don't care if I get paint on them, and then I'll slap <laughs> them off and whack them on a square one when I'm done. Yeah. I always do my bases separate from the models. Okay. I don't know if anyone else does that. I've, <laughs> I've heard that that's the good way, and I started doing it. Um, but for some models, I still don't bother. <laughs> it all depends. I, I like to have them on the base for some reason. I'm not sure. I think it's like a mental thing. I just like having them on the base so I can hold them when I paint them. And then I know that I don't have to fuck around trying to glue them back on or pin them yep. afterwards. That, that is the problem. You know, <laughs> you're just gluing them on a base and it's, it can snap off so easily. And then, yeah. you know, yeah. you have especially to be, during tournaments. You have to be a bit, bit, bit clever uh, with uh, how, you, how you design the base and if you pin in, in advance and all of that. So Yeah, I'm, I'm really clumsy here. for that. I just have to... <laughs> With like mass ranks of infantry, I'll never bother pinning them. I haven't got time for that. Yeah. Uh, so, what about you, Henry? Um, as, as I mentioned just before, I'm working on a samurai army for my Dread Elves. And I'm currently painting a samurai cavalry guy. Nice. He'll be, he'll be the, the nice. champion of the Shadow Riders. <laughs> so, what, what models are, uh, is that? This is uh, from Warlord Games. It's just their like, like her uh, historical uh, samurai line. Yeah. Hasn't had any kind of conversion or anything like that. But um, I'm using like a mixture of stuff for the army. I have um, I have a few models from Titan Forge. I'm actually using the old Games Workshop um, cold ones for the Raptor Knights, and yeah. then the Warlord Games samurai on top. Um, I have Warlord... the old old cold ones. 
Yeah, the fat, the fat ones. <laughs> the cool ones. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, the ones. <laughs> yeah. If, if anyone has some more um, in their old bits box, I'm, I need a couple for some chariots. So let me know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, like Warlord Games also do like a Roman range. So I've got some like Roman blister for the bolt throwers, and then putting like the samurai guys like on top to as the crew. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So it's kind of like scouring the internet for any kind of samurai stuff I can find that fits in with the dread elves. Yeah. Have you seen the the uh, Bushido range? Yeah, yeah. I have a few of those guys as well. Yeah. A, a lot nice. of my characters are those. Yeah, yeah. They're really nice. I plan to use a lot of the their guys for my uh, terracotta army as well. Ah, yeah, awesome. that's a good idea. Um, I think once the pandemic's over and we're all back to tabletop tournaments, there's going to be a lot of samurai armies knocking about. Yeah, I know. It's, <laughs> it's, it's been a lot of Eastern Asian inspired armies on the forums at the moment. That's that's really cool to see, actually. <laughs> You'll be like, my ones are Empire, but your samurais are Dark Elves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indeed. Um, right. Uh, for myself, I'm working on a cultist. You can see him here. Decently. Um, so this is a model from uh, Mom Miniatures, M-O-M. Uh, I got it from their Kickstarter. I I don't I haven't found it on their site, so I don't know if it's possible to like buy normally. Um, but it, it's a perfect cultist. He has, has like the the uh, uh, KKK hood and everything. Uh, so I'm pa painting him up for a little. Uh, warband, I'm doing a cultist warband for skirmish campaigns. Um, so trying out a, a few new stuff. I'm doing non-metallic metal on, on these guys, uh, which is not something I do often. So I figured I should try that. You're a bad man. <laughs> is, it, is it difficult to do? Uh, it takes a, some time. Um, I, I have one over here that I've started working on. Um, so um, this oh, wow. is that's really nice. Yeah, really good. Detail work on. Um, so um, it, it takes a lot of time doing the, the non-metallic metal for sure, but uh, I'm finding it pretty fun actually. Um, I, I, when I do metal, I usually do it in in the similar style, so I like paint the shines in in with metallic paint instead. Um, but um, yeah, you have a lot lot more control doing it with normal paint, so that's that's fun. I don't think I will, will do any real armies with it, but uh, certainly single pieces and stuff like that, I can uh, imagine it. Yeah, I so, think trying to do like uh, 15 spearmen or something would be <laughs> just not <yeah>. fun. <laughs> I've seen people on the for forum do that, and it, it, it looks cool, uh, for sure. Um, there's some uh, um, Dread, Dread Elf player, maybe the Grinch? Uh, can't remember. There are some 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 of the of that on the forums. So there are people who are, are even more mad than me, <laughs> despite the name. Um, all right. And uh, as always, uh, you in the audience, if you are painting while listening to this, uh, please leave a comment and let us know what uh, what you're working on. That's always interesting to hear. For once, I remember to to uh, say that at this point in the show. <laughs> um, so, we will move on to the news. Uh, and now I got to figure out how to share my screen. Uh, I think the UK Masters has taken over the news, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can start there, there actually, that's good. <laughs> uh, while I figure out how to share, share the screen. So, UK Masters. Um, so, uh, Tom from PTG has been very much on it on a sort of coverage for the masters and has produced tons of very good quality uh, content for it he's really bigging it up we had a, a live stream on thursday wednesday yeah someday this week yeah they something, did a live something like that yeah uh, which went really well i thought it was quite nice to see yeah um i think it's definitely uh, something that people like watching i think they had 80 views at some point so yeah i, I was yeah. one of them oh well uh, yeah did you enjoy it <laughs> yeah it was neat <laughs> um, hope so, hope yeah, to see more. Quite nice. were, were, you, were they commenting on the game, or what was it specifically? Yeah, so they're commenting on the game and giving some sort of you know tactical insight. 
uh, at times. Um, a lot of just sort of waffling amongst each other as well at times. Um, but no, I thought it worked really well. Uh, yep. it, it was good to see. Um, and I think there's definitely scope for it. You know, people really like Ninth Age. Um, I've enjoyed just watching games on UB. So it's nice to sort of, you know, watch a UB game whilst uh, painting and whatnot and someone's still talking you through what's happening. So, yeah, it's awesome. I think there's another one planned uh, next week, probably, in round three. Nice. So, yeah, it should be good. Yeah, I, I've always been interested in trying out doing live stream games of like real physical games at, at the tournaments I host. But I haven't, yeah. I, I haven't gotten around to it yet. But uh, that would be. I, I, did it, I did it once, and it was really difficult. Yeah, I imagine <laughs> you you have to have commentators and and people yeah, talking. Yeah, if it's like a video over a tabletop, yeah, it's very hard to follow what on earth's going on. So it doesn't really work. But with people yeah. telling you what's happening, it yeah. Uh, and, well. and at the the UK Masters, you had uh, was it you who did the commentary? Came in and talked with the uh, with the players. I did join in for a bit. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so, so you you got some some from real reporting from from the actual table with with their their thoughts and, and ideas and stuff like that. Yeah. To, to yeah, clarify and, everything. Uh, staff was doing that, listening on their uh, game and yeah, commenting back on what was actually happening because sometimes it can be quite tricky to follow just yeah. from the dialogues and stuff. Indeed. So uh, no, it's good. And I thought we worked really really well. For sure. Um. So yeah, that, that that's really cool to see. Uh, so I think I have have the um, screen share working now. You should be able to, able to see my screen. Yes. Um, so we'll m move on to the first bit of news. Uh, something that I've been hashing hashing a bit uh, on previous shows as well. So this is the dwarf monoplane from Woodax. <laughs> uh, it's now available on their uh, Etsy um, web store. Uh, previously, I think they, they used Facebook to to sell their stuff, but uh, it's here now. Um, and I, I really like this this miniature. It would make for a nice little uh, gy gyrocopter or something like that, I think. Yeah, so that's a really cool model. Right? I like that, even if it is dwarves. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, they do a lot of flying contraptions for, for dwarves, uh, uh, wood axe. Uh, they have a, they, I think my favorite is like a, it's a seeker that's uh, sur like wind surfing some contraption through the air. Uh, it's, yeah, I love it. <laughs> If I ever were to do dwarves, which I'm never going to, going to do, then that would definitely be an army. <laughs> uh, so we also have a new model from, uh, is it Mom or, uh, yeah, Mom Miniatures, uh, M O N. Oh, nice. uh, in front of dwarves. Awesome. Uh, in front of dwarf chariot. Yeah. I, I, I don't know exactly how, how recent this news is. Um, I, I stumbled over it when I was looking for the miniatures I'm painting at at the moment. Uh, but I hadn't, hadn't seen it before, so I thought I'd include it. Really cool, I think. Um, and as I say, perfect for a Ikadim chariot, maybe with the uh, with the Prophet on top. He looks a bit profity. Yeah, it's a really nice model, that. I actually spent seven hours yesterday doing a full Infernal Dwarves uh, background review, which is why I'm very hungover today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people who don't listen to, to your podcast might, might be confused by that st statement, but it makes perfect sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, looking forward to that for sure. I, I just have to sit through the seven hours and edit it. <laughs> it took you seven hours to record it. Yeah, it was seven, seven hours long. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's insane. Um, all right, so moving on. Uh, we have a Kickstarter. Actually relevant to what we're talking about today. Uh, so these are uh, Satyrs and Scythians. Scythians. Scythians, thank you. Um, not funded yet. Um, they have, uh, let's see... Uh, 3,800 pledged of their 6,000 gold, so uh, almost uh, two thirds of the way. But uh, I actually back, back the previous Kickstarter for the yeah. for the Isos model. Yeah. Uh, so I think the other Satyr models, the previous one. Yeah, yeah I that. think you can th these guys. You can get M1, them yeah, that's it. Yeah. here as well. I think we'll mention those later uh, in the okay. in the show. <laughs> uh, but they're doing a, a Kickstarter with this very 
classical uh, mythological looking miniatures um which is cool and it's a old plastic uh, inje injection molded i think you you can get the sdl files also um but i'm not i'm not sure um so here there are some of their older injection molded plastic stuff so there's that um and then the final bit of news that I have uh, is something for myself, a shameless plug, although I don't get anything from it. <laughs> so this is a uh, uh, an infernal art artillery that I uploaded to Thingiverse, um, designed by my, by myself. Uh, for I designed it for uh, an art uh, piece in the uh, leg legendary army book of the Infernal Dwarfs. I thought I recognized it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the, the, in, in that book you can see some some drawings of this this machine and since I had the, the 3d models already I I, I, I made a, drew everything up in in 3d CAD and I made the drawings using that software um, I'm an engineer by trade so it's what it's, it's what I do all day um, and uh, since I had the, the, the 3d models I could just, just as well make them available to people so that's what I did I think I've seen someone print these on the forum maybe uh, yeah, I, I made a chic little thing. I, I sent one part of uh, to, to my uh, uh, SS part of the Santa exchange. Oh, so yeah. I sent, sent one one to the one I, I was gifting. Uh, so you might have seen it in that thread. Um, who had it? Um, that, that 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 was a t test print I did of it, um, a prototype. So fix fix some some things since then, and uh, this is the final result. Cool. It's re it's really nice. Thank you. It's amazing. <laughs> Uh, uh, hoping, hoping to see, see, see it painted up someday. Might have to paint paint one up myself to include in the uh, in this um, thing here on Thingiverse. So uh, that's all the news I have. Um, been been a pretty slow couple of weeks um, from the nineties. Did you did you miss, did you miss the uh, Games Workshop kangaroo thingies? Yeah, I, I I did notice that. I don't know if they need the, the, any more attention, but uh, sure, that happened as well. <laughs> <laughs> that was fucking ridiculous. Models, in my opinion, they're so stupid. But well, um, well the new Lumineth range at all. When we're on the topic, I I I have to have to defend them because I actually quite like those kangaroos. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I I don't like elves in general, uh, but. Uh, I think they just find them bored, boring, but I mean, kangaroos, that's that's something new at least. It's something interesting. Uh, I didn't like the cow elves that I did previously, but um, this direction, yeah, I can see it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not going to have a discussion. <laughs> I think we just have to agree to disagree. <laughs> yeah. Pro probably best that way. Uh, okay. So. That's that's all the news then. <laughs> um, we'll move on to the to the main segment. Unless you have anything you want to add. Uh, so, as I said in the introduction, we'll be looking at the um, the background, the miniatures, and the rules. And we'll start with the background. Uh, I just have to find a appropriate color. <clears throat> um, so the beast thirds uh, is a faction made up of a lot of beasts uh, all kinds of sizes and different uh, types uh, and they go by, by a lot of names um, sometimes just simply beasts uh, also known as, as beast men uh, or uh, split hooves uh, or split foots or uh, hor horned ones so have a lot of names um, their history is quite unknown, uh, their origins at least. They just sort of showed up uh, in the Third Age, um, according to the World Hymn at least. Uh, that's the main source of history for, uh, for them. Uh, so they just showed up in Vetia and started uh, to uh, harass the dwarves and the elves. Uh, at the st start of the <clears throat> the Ages of Ruin, uh, which is one of the forces that uh, that drove the uh, dwarves underground. 
and also drove the uh, um, highborn elves, the Arandai, uh, away from uh, Vetia and uh, uh, to the colonies in Surexia, which eventually spawned the uh, Dreadels faction. So if you don't like Dreadels, blame the uh, uh, Beast Herds. <laughs> that all makes sense. Um, in and, and then from that point they were just like uh, a, a force of nature causing trouble uh, all across the globe um, and in the 8th age when um, the humans in Vetia were almost <laughs> defeated uh, extinct, the, the vermin swarm controlled Avras and, and the whole Avrasi empire the beast herds rallied around the uh, around uh, Brag, the black bull, uh, great leader of theirs, uh, who uh, started marching westwards, cutting across uh, what is the, today uh, Sonstal, and eventually came ac across the Askar, uh, led by Varin, and faced them in battle at the Battle of the Gavash, uh, a river in. Uh, Northwestern Thornstall. And the, the humans were just ma massacred, uh, and eventually Varin faced uh, Brag in single combat and was defeated, uh, almost killed. But a single warrior stepped in front of him and uh, revealed to be a, a woman who then drew her sword and slayed uh, the Brag the Black, Black Bull, who was probably a Minotaur or something like that, really big. So one blow to bring him down to his knees, and one, one blow to the head and killing him. Uh, and that later turn, turned out to be Sunna, uh, made flesh. Um, and then, uh, from uh, ever since then, the, the, the beast stars have been a constant thorn in the side of, of humanity and the other factions. So, about the culture, um, the herds, as they are, uh, there are two different kinds. The one that everybody faces in battle is known as the the war herds these are led by chieftains or or, or um, soothsayers sometimes uh, it seems that uh, the, the, the soothsayer is, is really in charge though um, officially it's the it's the uh, chieftain um, and then they, uh, they they roam about uh, and raid stuff um, and are the, the, the ones that are usually encountered. Um, <clears throat> the beasts are very short-lived, and as such, they, they are like always striving for immortality. Not in the sense that the words of the Dark Gods do, although some do turn to the Dark Gods and, and pledge their soul that way. Uh, but most of them want to be immortalized through stories and uh, legend, so they try to do these great raids and, and deeds to uh, to be remembered by their kin uh, which is also why they have they have a, 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 a storytelling tradition and all of their culture is preserved in stories and they have a great respect for statues and all of that so they can siege they siege a town and destroy everything except for the statues because they respect those and they can also like trade with other factions to get statues of themselves because then they are immortalizing themselves and they, because they can't, they, they are not that good at craftsmanship to really make nice statues. Did they do do some basic smithing at least? Um, and that brings us to the hidden herds that are the other type of herd, which is uh, what all the the war herds are are sort of orbiting about. Uh, the, uh, and defending uh, these hidden herds, which are seldom encountered. They, they consist of the herd mothers um, of the of the species, and of the young ones and the old ones, and the um, and a couple of beasts and soothsayers too for protection. Some of the really titanic beasts, apparently. Um, and uh, um, these beasts are actually part of the same species, it, it seems. Uh, the sources we have on these are, are a bit unclear, but um, um, the, the beasts apparently breed new species through magic uh, on, on, the, on the fetus in the womb and, and 
keep uh, like an, an enhanced um, evolution going on to create uh, bigger and bigger and meaner and meaner beasts and all, th all, all types of horrendous stuff. Which I think is a fairly cool aspect of them. I, I, I haven't seen that. It, 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 previously it was like more of a, a vermin swarm thing. Um, I think it's a little different though, right? With the beast heads. It's more like um, a natural evolution rather yeah. than like um Yeah, an enhanced ev evolution, yeah. but still fairly nat natural. Yeah. Um, they're not stitching them together. They are born naturally. Uh, all of, the, all of them. Um, so I think that's cool. Um, and as I said, they are also very short-lived, which of course helps this evolution thing. Uh, short, short generations is a good thing in that aspect. Yeah. Uh, they are even more short-lived than humans, apparently. Uh, which is also something I like. Uh, often in fantasy settings, it, humans become like the standard thing, the worst thing in every possible aspect. Uh, mm. They are weaker than uh, than everything. They are slower than everything, and they live shorter than everything else. Um, but here, the the beasts are the real dregs <laughs> in in this <laughs> this uh, uh, way at least. So I like that. Um, I have some short notes on their their politics uh, and stuff like that. They um, sometimes they are used like as as pawns by the uh, dark gods, who, like trick them into <clears throat> into doing their bidding. As I said, some some of them do align with the dark gods, but generally they are their own thing. Um, and they are also used as mercenaries quite often. Uh, I think something that's uh, different to Legacy is that they're a bit more um, sentient than yeah. just being raging beasts. They they communicate. They they can they can trade. They can make deals. And yeah. that's a little interesting, perhaps, compared to what we're used to. Yeah, they, 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 they certainly seem to have a lot more going on than just mindless uh, murderers. Um, and uh, as I said, they, they trade, uh, they do like some basic metal crafting, but they do also trade, although it's often forbidden, because you don't want, <laughs> the, the, the people in power don't want the, the beast search around them to get better stuff <laughs> so that they can wage more <laughs> better. Uh, so it's often forbidden. Um, but still, uh, people do it, um, and uh, and as I said, they are often used as as mercenaries. Again, a bit frowned upon by many, but uh, as they are quite good at waging war, they can be effective in that. Uh, although sometimes they can be a bit turn cloak, and uh, once un unleashed, they might just attack anybody in the <laughs> in the vicinity instead. Um, what kind so, of races would use mercenaries? Just the human ones? Yeah, humans for sure, I think. Um, maybe the ogres too. Um, I mean, they are used as mercenaries as well, but... Uh, yeah. Probably goblins, dwarves... Yeah. Maybe even elves? Maybe I should have some beast herds in, in my... Uh, or beast men uh, models in my in my empire army. I have a lot of mercenaries, but no. No beasts at the moment. Hmm. <laughs> I need to think about that. <laughs> but yeah, <clears throat> um, that's about it I have for the background. Um, yes, powering through. Um, I mean, are they? Uh, I've never really seen them as evil in this iteration. Like whereas in, in the old world, they were very much an evil army. They were worshippers of the dark gods, weren't they? Yeah. Uh, are they now, or is it just some of them are that way? I think uh, the same with uh, most races is that they can you can choose to worship wh whoever can choose to worship the dark gods. Um, the beastmen they worship more their ancestors and revere like uh, these great beasts who have done good deeds. Yeah. Um, but in the same way as a human or an elf or even like we were told about lizardmen, or, um, or even giants. Giants, they can all kind of turn to the dark gods if they choose to. But they're not primarily no, dark no. Worshippers then, no. No, no. Good. I've always found that a bit a bit dull for my taste. Everyone just, you know, just worshiping the dark gods for fun and destroying <laughs> everything. <laughs> yeah. You know, they they are they are more natural um in a way than the than the dark dark gods uh, who are not of this world literally. 
but they they, they are their own thing. Um, which are the right own beast heads are all uh, like eco terrorists, <laughs> animal liberation people. Who have like banners of liberate and freedom and stuff on, and <laughs> doing like, unit yeah. fillers with like horses. They're walking away with knights dead on the floor because they, they just want to save the horses. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> liberate all the beasts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can see that <laughs> for sure. Um, but yeah, I, I I like this approach that they've, they've taken with the making them more humane in a way um, to um, have like real motivation uh, motivations and stuff. <clears throat> yeah, I like that they can communicate with the other races and stuff as well, rather than just being this bunch of grunting nutters in the forest. Yeah, and and apparently this uh, th- this commu- communication part is actually also part of this breeding. Uh, it's through that that they managed to create beasts with actual vocal cords that make them able to communicate. So yeah. not not every beast can do it, but they have like some specialized beasts for communicating with people. <laughs> <laughs> so I've always thought of the the mongrels as more of a the human side of the beasts. I think you know. The Minotaur are more yeah. beast than man, and the Mongols are more man than beast. Yeah, the Mo- Mongols are, are interesting. I don't really know what, what what's up with them, but I, I mean, the name implies that they're like a half breed or something. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I don't know, don't really know uh, what they are. That will be interesting to find out. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure, so I can't yeah. tell you. <laughs> um, well, I see, they made an appearance in the uh, ID fluff, didn't they? Uh, um, that, that I must have missed. Uh, I the have... story with the Kadim Chariot. Uh, oh, yeah. That, that was a terrible just... story, aren't they? About this Kadim Chariot that goes in and just massacres everyone. Yeah, but it was very. It was it was, it was a very short reference. I don't think they kind of elaborated too much about them. <laughs> no, no, not at all. But it's nice that they uh, still made an appearance, I think. And it was yeah. told from the perspective of the Beast Herds. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I haven't made uh, made it that far in the in, in the book yet. I'm um, I'm still still working my way way through it. Uh, now <laughs> now I'm a bit ashamed about uh, not not having 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 done my research. <laughs> there, was only, there was only one short story, so you haven't missed too much. <laughs> yeah, but still, th- th- that's uh, I I keep saying this, but that's one of the things I really like about Night Edge way of of sell- telling the stories because you, because you get the perspective of what they're talking about and the perspective of, of uh, the the people that are telling the story. So. If it's from the point of view of a be- of a beast herd, then you learn a little bit about beast herds as well. So I quite like that. And like in the ID fluff, the main sort of storyteller in it wasn't from Sonstal. You know, it was uh, yeah from uh, Swandon. Uh, the... Yeah. So that was quite nice to introduce sort of a new faction, I suppose. Yeah, yeah I-, I was really happy about that. Uh, collect- collecting ter- terracotta as I am. <laughs> I, I'm uh, convinced that I have to include a, a Kirin, is that what it was called? Uh, his companion. Yeah. Um, in, in my army somehow. Yeah, I'm because... I'm using uh, one from Titanforge as a a character on a raptor. Yeah. Nice. Um, I I will pr- probably use it as an a moot or something like that. That's my thinking. Um. So, um, do we have anyth- anything else we want to chat about on the on the fluff and the background of them? I just want more beast herd fluff. Really, it's uh, still quite open for them, isn't it? And yeah, I don't believe there's any plans for them yet, but I'm sure they will get there eventually. Yeah, for sure. Um, who knows? Might be the next book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've seen- we don't know anything beyond KOE yet, do we? Well, Vermin Swarm is after, right? Vermin Swarm is the next, isn't next it? and then KOE. KOE. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, but after that, we don't know. My my money would be on Undying Dynasties, actually. Um, or or well, someone else. I think they want to do it. Those uh, uh, are, they have all the fluff and all of that ready, so they want to just knock that out quick. I have a fairly good idea of what it's going to be. But I'm not <laughs> <laughs> I reckon it's going to be Orcan Goblins. That would be my guess. That would be nice. <laughs> all right. Uh, shall we move on to the miniatures? Yeah. Um, so, do either of you want to start? 
Uh, I mean, how do you how do you want to do this? I, th I think we'll, we'll we'll go through uh, round robin and, and do t two or three picks each. Okay. Of of mi miniature kits and and talk a little bit about the, about the whole range that they are from also if we feel like it. Okay. Where to start? Hmm. Um. I can kick off uh, us off if you want to. Yeah, uh, go go ahead. Yeah, go on. So I think, uh, yeah, I'll add the pictures in later. I think that's easier. Uh, or, or do you have prepared so you can you can share a screen or stuff like that? Uh, with anything. I also did. I'll try mm -hmm. now. Unless I'm picking up models from my cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, th I think we, we, I'll add pictures in later. That's easier. So, um, or or hmm. I'll do like this. I share my screen and then show you those at least uh, so the first one i want to talk about are these guys so these are from windmaster and uh, they're called bullmen um, you buy them in, in packs of five uh, for eight euros so, um, so fairly cheap actually yeah it's not too bad it's actually really good i think yeah um, and they, they are in resin resin cost um, and I mean they look decent I think um, <clears throat> it's perhaps not, not the most detailed miniatures but they certainly serve as core so I, I, I would definitely uh, rate these for use as, uh, as wild horns or something like that yeah I, th I think when you're building your core it doesn't they don't need to be like super elaborate models yeah I've also considered using these for my core but I one, I haven't really got around to it, and two, um, I don't like them that much. <laughs> they're a bit kind of uh, dorky looking for me, but I, they're they're very they're a good value for money, and they're not the worst sculpt. So I was actually considering them for my army at one point. Yeah, yeah, I, I've been thinking about uh, about them as well. Um, the, the Windmaster have have a whole range of of um, stuff. So they have like some centaurs, very very bad pictures though, and some minotaurs as well, and everything quite cheap. What are uh, they called? Windrush. Uh, Windmaster. Windmaster. Um, sorry about that. Um, and they also have some characters as well. Um, and everything quite cheap. And um, depending on how the um, how the essence of war. Uh, army ends up for the for the beast herds. Um, I know the, the the quick starter army that they had. You can get you could, could get everything you needed from from Wind Monsters. I was thinking about just getting all of that to paint what, uh, that up, uh, just to have. Um, and I might might still do that if if they remain similar in in Essence of War. So I think they are a nice cheap option uh, for. Uh, the, the units of of your army, basically. Uh, do you have have a pick, Henry? Um, I think I would like to talk about the chariots from Mantic. So they shouldn't be too difficult to find. Um, I'd probably go for the ogre ones. Uh, I have the orc uh, ones. The orc ones and the ogre ones are the same miniatures. Oh, okay. But I think the ogre models look a little bit better for uh, the beast guys. Yeah, exactly. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. So you can get you can buy units of these as well, Matt. So maybe yeah. if you pull up a unit, because just because I don't know what the price is for. <laughs> uh, let's see if I can figure out how to do that. Uh, I think you get three in a box, dear. Yeah, exactly. It's not not expensive at all. Yeah. So for me, I I've. I use these chariots for um, for my uh, for, for, forty forty euro for uh, three chariots. That's pretty good. Yeah. So I think this is like a, a good value for money choice for chariots, and I mean the, the you can get them with ogres or orcs on the back. I actually got mine with orcs. Um, I wasn't going to use either, so it wasn't an issue, but. <laughs> But I think they they're really nice and uh, quite easy to build. So I, I would recommend these ones for people who want a value for money chariot choice for their raiding chariots. 
that's that's nice. I guess those could be used like for, for any any faction with chariots, really. Yeah, um, exactly. But they they look very nice for for raiding chariots, indeed. I think chariots are some of the harder models sort of come by. In yeah, the, they can be quite expensive as well. I think if you're going to buy them from Games Workshop, you're probably paying almost this price for one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that, that, that's nice. Awesome. Mm. <clears throat> do, do you have a pick, Kevin? Kevin? <laughs> well, um, there's a new Kickstarter I've sort of backed um, called Pig Orcs. That sounds interesting. Uh, by Kev Adams, who used to do some of the old GW sculptures back in the day. Um, and I'm going to use them as my mongrels. Even though I said they should be human, but I think these models just look really, really fun. If you do like, uh, yeah, there they are. <laughs> <laughs> if you scroll down, they've got all different kinds of weapons and stuff. And there's one in particular that is uh, absolutely going to be my favourite one. Where is he? Keep going. Yeah. Next one. These look nice. <laughs> A wizard. Him. That one. That, the this one. Finger. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he reminds me a little bit of you, Kev. I think it's the bald head. <laughs> yeah. The bald head is his kill, naked, throwing shit at people when he's losing. <laughs> and bugbears as well. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I think that's a really still, nice one. Is the Kickstarter still open? Uh, Sorry? Is it still uh, running, the Kickstarter? I think uh, it might be. No, I think it's closed. Is it, is it finished? Yeah. Uh, That's a shame. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they might be open to make pledges. Yeah. Uh, I think. Uh, is it Otherworld miniatures? They do a lot of uh, pig orcs as well. Um, so if you're in the market for those, you can check out Otherworld miniatures. But yeah. If you had an orc army as well, I'm sure you could uh, mix and match. Yeah. They definitely work for both. All right. Um. Nice. Uh, I also wanted to mention, let's see here, now I have a lot of uh, things open. Uh, here we are. So these are some uh, satyrs uh, from uh, Crocodile Games, um, which I think would, lo would work perfectly as an, uh, as an Angor Raider unit. Um, Pretty straightforward, but uh, I think they look nice. Uh, metal, I think, uh, but still. Um, so many companies I've never even heard of. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it, it it's <laughs> it's a lot to keep track of for sure. And uh, um, I should should have mentioned that at the start of this segment because uh, the Night Age do of course have their library where you can check out a lot of miniatures for every faction and uh, the base are some no, no, exce no exception there's a lot of stuff on, on there and a lot of cool stuff on there so i was trying to look at them when i'm at work but the problem is a lot of these websites are blocked at work because they have game in the title <laughs> 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 i see yeah um and I think the Crocodile Games have a few other, other miniatures as well. I saw a, 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 a Cyclops uh, from them uh, scrolling through and um, some other stuff. Um, do you have another pick, Henry? Yeah. Um, I'm just going to send you a link on the chat. This is the one to my miniature. Um, the miniature is called uh, Guy the Reliable from Legends of Signum. Uh, maybe you want to pull up one of the, the original models as well. Uh, if you keep scrolling down, next one, next one. Oh, that's the last one. Next one. one. <laughs> no, one more. <laughs> this one. And if you go down a bit more, you'll see the banner that I did. Yeah, nice. There we are. There you go. Yeah, so this this one is um, from Legends of Signum. It's like a Rackham miniature. And uh, I converted it just to basically switch the banner arm and the axe arm around. Um, I, I use this for BSB in my B-Sirds army. Yep. It's like a super, super nice uh, sculpt. 
and uh, really good quality miniatures in general. Um, if this is what it looks like, uh, pre-conversion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't remember what it was called, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a, a super nice sculpt. Um, Legends of Signum in general, they don't do many. Actually, they do a lot of um, like kind of hybrid beast men characters. They do like a set of wolves. They do different kind of um, like maybe a fox or something like that. So there's lots of really nice characterful character models uh, in this in this range. And they've just started uh, printing again because they were out of print for a long time. So nice. I have a, I recommend checking out the Legends of Signum website. You can spend years on there because there's so much stuff. <laughs> uh, so, so this is a, a a 3D printed model that you buy directly from them. You buy the print. Y yeah, you buy the model itself. Yeah. I don't think they're doing STLs yet, at least. <laughs> yeah, and the resin is really nice quality. Nice. Okay. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. Um, awesome. Uh, do you have another one, Kev? I think for me, it's probably just uh, Mirsa Miniatures as a whole. I think their entire yeah. model yeah. range for any of your monster needs. It, yeah. So pretty much got you covered. No matter, you know, you want a Jabberwock, you want a Giant, or a, they've definitely got Cyclopses, and they've got their own Gorgons and stuff. Um, I, I have a I have a Gortak from them. Yeah, I've got their Gortak. I'm using it as a beast giant at the moment. Um, but yeah, they've got so many great miniatures, and even though they are expensive, there's always a deal on. Like, yeah, constantly. <laughs> you can always get yeah. emails. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I think people should definitely be uh, getting some stuff from them. They're really good. I also use the uh, like wild boar guys for my chariot, my razor tusk chariot. The uh, their raised their, their pig models or yeah, the actual... like razor. I think they're. I'm not sure what they're called, but they're like razor, basically big pigs with like spiky bits on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've got them. They're really nice. Yeah, they're really good. We've also got like a giant ogre pig man as well, who I thought looked really good. If I ever get a unit of six. Razor Tusk and run them. I might have him as sort of a figurehead for him. Yeah. Because he's a really nice model too. Uh, yeah, I think they just got... They're really nice models as well. Really good quality resin. Um, sometimes it, the resin bends a bit, but if you just put a hairdryer on it, it'll soon straighten out. Yeah, I have a few... I have a, a Minotaur character from them as well. I think like my warriors as well. I've got a lot of uh, monsters for for my warriors, like the uh, chimeras and stuff. Yeah, they are, are really really a treasure uh, for treasure trove for all kinds of monsters. Yeah, I actually don't have any any of the models yet, but I I have my eyes on a lot of a lot of them. So maybe soon. Pull the trigger. Well, they had a buy one get one free giant offer as well or something. Uh, yeah, they, they did that before. like in in. Uh, at the same time as the the giant supplement was released for, from for the ninth age. <laughs> yeah, the whole world went giant crazy, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah, Games Workshop, yeah, Games Workshop released the giants at, at the same time, so yeah, everything was giants there for a while. <laughs> that was nice. Which is great. Everyone loves giants. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so that'd be my pick. All right. Nice. Um, I have one more thing, uh, which is another Mantic kit. These are the, their centaurs, uh, metal models, uh, as far as I understand. But uh, I think they look nice, and you have got a lot of uh, weapon weapons options. So I don't really like these ones that much. I have a centaur character. Yeah. But he was also a bit kind of small scale compared to the other centaurs that I have. I see. And, and I don't really like the aesthetic so much. They're a bit kind of dorky for me. I think they have a lot, a, a, a very strong like mythological um, feel, like um, yeah, very true to the 
they work very well with those satire models as well. Yeah, exactly. They go hand in hand. Um, so if if you go go down that path of well, a very mythological looking uh, beast, I, I can definitely see a place for these guys. What centaurs do you use, Henry? I actually converted mine um, from the Wild Huntsman Games Workshop Wild Huntsman models. Oh yeah, and the Games Workshop. Um, like gore models, I guess they're called. You can also probably I'll have a I'll just find them on my um, blog. Um, but they I I was I made an exception for these because it was a kind of a conversion, so it's not so much of like a using games workshop models. It's more uh, combining two sets of games workshop models. Yeah. Games workshop have their own central models as well, but they're yeah amazing in either. They're not anything special, I don't think, and. Um, no. And they're also quite difficult to find. If you scroll down about halfway down this this link, you'll find the ones that I have made. There we are. Yeah. Oh, they're, yeah. They're super dynamic. Yeah, for sure. I, 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 was, I was naughty and got the models from China. To <laughs> <laughs> are they the huntsman horses yeah the deer. deer the deer isn't it yeah the huntsman deer with like a, a gore body and then the hair from the huntsman on the top of the gore oh yeah and then the ears the ears from the deer also <laughs> the ears are really <laughs> nice <actually. laughs> yeah um should we mention that uh, uh, the the the, um, the fawn from that Kickstarter as well? Uh, yeah. Like these guys uh, have them here. Uh, you have some of these, right, Henry? Yeah, I, I bought. I pledged for everything in the, like the big box, and basically the centaur were too small compared to my centaur, so I'm probably going to sell them at some point. If anyone wants like 20 centaurs, let me know. Um, and then the, I used the satires for my wild horns. Yeah. Um, I've I spent the time building like basically thirty of each <laughs> <laughs> of like each each weapon choice, so paired weapons and the helm weapon and shield guys. They are a little bit small, but I think most of my other wild my wild what are called wild horns. No, the mongrels are also quite small. So I think they're going to fit in fine, even though they're they're a little bit a little bit small. Um, as you can see, compared to like the twenty five mil round bases on the picture that you're showing, yeah, um, they they are a little bit small, but it's okay. I think they're actually really nice quality sculpts, and um, adding a bit of armor and stuff on them makes them look better. I think I would actually, if I were to collect beast hearts, I think I would use these guys as. Um as my mongrels and the um, and the windmaster as the uh, as the wild horn, I think. Yeah, the, the issue was I'd already bought mongrel yeah. <laughs> miniatures, from the <laughs> already painted them, so <laughs> then it makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah, I think the one of the miniature company that we should mention is Atlantis Miniatures. Yeah, I'm um, I'm using their Minotaur. I mean, they're nothing like uh, the Zealot miniatures, crazy mental guys, but they do fit nicely on a 40 mil base, and they're quite kind of classic mythology minotaurs. And uh, yeah, the Atlantis miniatures in general make some have some really nice um, other kind of options for models as well. These I guys have a bear are... from them that uses a unit filler and stuff like that. I love their Yeti model. Yeah. Yeah, look nice. Yeah. Uh, so we, we we mentioned Zealot miniatures before, uh, who do like awesome um, minotaurs as well. So maybe we should bring that up. I mean, they'd definitely be my pick because uh, <laughs> I just think they're more fantastic. They're definitely the most elaborate minotaur models out there. Yeah. All super dynamic and yeah, yeah, really characterful. They have a big uh, Minotaur Lord on a 
like a big mount thing, a big rhino mount. That's a lot of fun too. I've got that model, <laughs> which I'll probably use as my Razor Tusk chariot. Um, nice. It's massive though. <laughs> Nice. I've been thinking about get, getting one of these just to make a a, a, a di diorama or something, uh, but I'm not sh not sure yet. Um, they are, look really cool. I've also got uh, they had a sleeping minotaur, which I'm going to put in a forest and use as my seed of the dark forest. <laughs> nice. I'm sort of scratch building that because uh, I've never really turned my hand towards terrain before. So it should be an interesting project. Yeah, sounds neat. Okay, um, are we finished with the um, with the miniatures then? I mean, I, I could go on and on. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I, 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 scrolling through your your blog is a, a great inspiration for uh, for finding miniatures for sure. <laughs> I think you've shown that you can easily do a non GW beast army. There's yeah. definitely the models out there. Yeah, definitely. And it's one of the harder ones as well. Yeah. But yeah, there's all these companies out there. Well done on finding them all. Because I'm really bad at finding them. <laughs> oh, it's, it's many, many hours like on the internet looking for miniatures, I must say. <laughs> hours, well, hours well spent, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> I'll also say that if we're talking about minor tools, that Mercia makes have some really nice monster infantry models. Or large infantry models that can be used for minotaurs as well. Whether you want rhinos or camels or like yeah. whatever. <laughs> they have like all, all yeah. the different minotaur models. Nice. I'm not going to try and find those because uh, Mercer Miniatures website really confuses me. So. Yeah. <laughs> the name. Where you're going. <laughs> but they, they sure what do have do? a lot of stuff for, for the beast herds. Uh, all right, then I will. That's it. If you wanted to do like desert beast herds, you could easily do that with those camel minotaurs and stuff. You know, there's yeah. some other models you can get out to represent the wild horn and whatnot. Yeah, exactly. Because I guess uh, they aren't all just you know forest dwelling beasts, are they? They're all over the world. The work, the beast herds. For sure. Yeah. One of the stories is say they found them on every single continent. Every, everywhere they go, there's always beast herds. So yeah. they could be anything. <laughs> I think I think there's also something to be said for using like human models as beast herds. Like you don't necessarily need need to use like uh, goat models. Yeah. Um, there's a range from uh, raging heroes, which are like kind of shamany type people, where you could you could probably use those as as beast herds and and it would work okay. They're like yeah. very like you know, bestial. Um, Tribal humans. Yeah, I think that would work. All right, nice. Oh. All right. Um, I will try and find links for most of the stuff I shown um, in and put, put put it down below so that the audience can check it out. Um, but uh, I guess we'll move on. Time for the rules. Um, so here my idea was that we do a, um, as usual, we do a, a good, ba bad, and gem pick. Uh, go, oh, yeah. Going around the table. Um, so uh, should we start with Henry this time? Sure. Well, uh, I'm not going to steal Kev's thunder because I know which one he's going to choose first. <laughs> <laughs> so let, 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 let's go, go with uh, with a good a good pick. Um, I think um, the raiding chariot unit is a really good pick in Cork. I have just being able. I think chariots in general are, are really useful to play with, and to be able to take units of them is fantastic. And um, having them from core is even better. So I think raiding chariots are, are usually in my army, mostly because I don't have any painted uh, wild horn models yet. <laughs> but <laughs> I think yeah. they're, they're also really, really fun to use. I always find the chariots either do nothing because your opponent's terrified of them and just, you know, just put so much effort into getting rid of them that they end up doing nothing. But if they're left alone, they can just take the world on. They're yeah. absolutely yeah. astounding. 
yeah, and so so good at at zoning everything and and keeping yeah. things at bay. Exactly, and if all they do is just zone and don't actually charge anything, that's still fine because yeah. you know they can hold up half an army on their own. Yeah, they're also cheap and from core. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not like these guys are lacking for scoring either, so you don't need to rely on your core for all your scoring. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so, do, uh, or do we see Shoyos in most of the competitive lists? Also, yeah, I, th- yeah. I think Chariots is a really good place at the moment, sort of competitively, because there's lots of single models running about still, but also a lot of elves. Obviously, we dread elves, and I think uh, they don't like being charged with chariots. No, yeah. I think they before they get to straight. Uh, twice this weekend with his warriors and he had one chariot and that was just on my priority just to kill it every, <laughs> every game I spent the first two turns just all the shooting and magic went in, into the one chariot just to kill it because my elf <laughs> was afraid of it see so, yeah, I think there's definitely a lot of chariots knocking about one of the the other beast has player at the UK Masters is has nine chariots <laughs> <laughs> nice uh, okay so uh, what's your good pick, pick for a good unit then Kev. Well, as uh, Henry will assume, he's pr- uh, the uh, Minotaur Warlord. Oh, you just you just can't beat him. Uh, you don't see him a great deal. A lot of people take the Beast Chieftain on the Chariot, who's also a great pick. But that Minotaur Warlord, he very rarely lets me down because he, because of Primal Fury, predominantly, he's pretty much always getting rerolls to hit. Yeah, which is massive. Um, even like elves with their plus one to hit will still have the odd round where they fluff and do nothing. Whereas it's just so unlikely for him, especially if you give him rerolls to wound as well. And with the battle focus. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, He's... He often gets uh, more hits than he has attacks, I assume. Yeah, that's happened quite a few times. <laughs> <laughs> like six at a minimum is what you can expect from him every single round. He's just so reliable. Uh, the thing, his only weakness is he's normally sat in the unit of Minotaurs. He might die before, you know, before they can hit, and therefore he won't do enough damage. <laughs> uh, but no, I love him. I think he's great, and I'm glad that he avoided any sort of po- points increased in the latest update. That pleased me immensely. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's a it's a really scary monster for sure. <laughs> um. So, he just would never really met his match in combat. There's not much that can actually uh, go toe to toe with him as well in a challenge or anything. Yeah, I think I saw yeah. a, a, a challenge, um, um, a game played next ne- next to me the last time I I, I played uh, with Red Elves versus the um, uh, Bizards, uh, and I think it was a Minotaur Warlord who went up against some some red character, and he only hit on five up. Um, because of the distracting and stuff like that, uh, but yeah. he, he still co- caused like six hits. hits. <laughs> <laughs> so, so distracting doesn't bother him because you just make meaning he's more likely to get more sixes. Yeah, <laughs> more rerolls <laughs> and more sixes. Yeah, um, I, I I know the experience with uh, using ghouls and uh, poison. Um, get, getting minus one to hit on them doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> it's always better. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. Um, I think my pick for a good unit is gonna be the Longhorns. Um, I've heard that they've been become very, very popular uh, in the, in the recent update. Uh, they went down in points in big units, I, I assume. Yeah, additional models went down three points, I think. Yeah. Uh, and I've been regularly play, playing against uh some Bizards, uh, and he uses a big unit of longhorns every game even before the, before this update and i always struggle against that that thing um sure they die pretty easily but they hit back like like a truck uh with all of those attacks strength six and uh primal fury primal instinct um so that's yeah that's really um, they are expensive think. though i st- and they die so easily yeah, I, I I haven't fig- figured out how to kill them, so please elaborate. <laughs> what kills them? I see in big blocks like that, they are very difficult to kill, especially with druidism as well. If they're taking druidism, which is the ideal choice, yeah, they, yeah, that's what it. So hard to kill. Yeah, 
but I just hate druidism as a law, which is why <laughs> I don't run big blocks of uh, Longhorn because it means I'd have to take that. <laughs> yeah, I think, I would probably try out. All units of Longhorn ambushing is also quite good. Are those yeah. the, and the ten man units that can ambush are also pretty nice. I haven't seen That's that why I tend to run. They're oh, really good. Nice. Cool. Are they discipline eight, right? Yeah, discipline eight. You know, uh, strength five. Take a halberd on it. So the agility four when they charge. You know, when you're ambushing them on, they pretty much get to choose what they want to fight as well. So yeah, they can be really, really good. as well, which is nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the uh, addition, uh, steadfast in flanks and rear and whatnot is great on any ambushing model. Uh, so yeah, I really rate them as a uh, as ambushers. Nice. Um, I've seen the, uh, w one time um, when I played against them, it, it, it a pretty obvious weakness appeared though. Um, he ran a soothsayer as the general, so he had only d discipline eight, and uh, ran into some fear causing stuff and lost combat. So that's a discipline seven steadfast because they are not fearless. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, for for a a potential Death Star unit without Fearless, it's not often that it it becomes relevant, but when it does, it's it can be a nightmare. That is definitely one of the problems when you ambush them on. If someone's got like a giant or yeah character on a big monster hanging out of the back, they can just terror bomb you off right away. And you're like, oh, that was a waste. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um. Alright, so that's the good picks. Um, there are, of course, other good stuff in the army, and we'll get to some more in the in the gem section, I'm sure. So how about how about some bad bad stuff, things that never see use, um, Henry? Uh, I think the the standout one um, is probably the Briar Beast. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen that played competitively. It it's quite a cool concept, like the ambushing from the forest, but. I think you can better spend your your special points on something else. Yeah. Yeah, I I I faced it a few times actually. Um and it's I think it, their only like redeeming factor is this ambush from the forest thing. Um because <laughs> I I forgot about it <laughs> as the opponent and I think that's quite easily easy to to do. Uh so you can catch people out with that. Uh, but it's still not not something you really want to rely upon. So, yeah, I just don't think it's really worth investing in it. Yeah, and it 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 depends a lot on the on the table like, too, I guess. Yeah. yeah, that's the problem with him. You can't guarantee it's gonna be a forest on the table. So, yeah, unless you have yeah. seed of the yeah, dark you forest. Yeah, you seed if you take it. <laughs> so, yeah, that's true. Um. But they are still pretty nasty in combat, right? Like, pretty resilient and, and all of that. Yeah, I think they're res 5. I've, I've never actually taken it. I've always wanted to, because he's it's not... <laughs> is he 100 points now? I think he's gone down in points. Yeah. Um, yeah, res 5. No armor, though. But he's unbreakable, which is great. Yeah, right. That, that's the annoying you know, part. <laughs> yeah. You have to actually kill him. You can't scare him off. It's random mover, right? Yeah, it's random mover. So that's really nice. Fear causer as well. So yeah, so yeah, if he can get into a bunker or something, he, he could be really, really good. If yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Um, all right. Do you have a a, a bad pick, Kev? Probably the Cyclops for me. I think yeah. I, don't, I just don't like the Cyclops at all. I, I don't think it really fits him and the rest of the army myself because he's essentially a, a bit piece of artillery, isn't he? Yeah. And you either take three or you take none. That's my main issue with him. And if you take your three, you got to build your whole list around him. And but it, yeah, yeah, potential would be amazing. I, I've seen people run that 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 shooting list with the with the uh, with the Cyclops in, in in three of them. Is there any gas on that, that type of list? Yeah, I think it's good. All right. 
I, I it, this was probably going to be my gem pick, but we may as well do it now. <laughs> I, I, go on, man. I really <laughs> like it, like a strength five. Uh, no, sorry, sorry, actually, strength six Cyclops. It's surprisingly good in combat. Yeah, like even even if you're not using it for the like rock throwing thing, like it's a cheap monster that fights better than you might think. Yeah, against the infantry, those those D D six stomps at strength six, strength six are gonna make a difference. Yeah, exactly, and um, it's also got five attacks, which reroll to hit, usually. Oh no, wait, it doesn't have a uh, oh, instinct. Oh, instinct. Hmm. Okay, maybe I'll. I'll... <laughs> I mean, you still, yeah, you're right. I mean, it's a piece of artillery that can still charge you off terror, terror bomb stuff, and yeah, and yeah. it's yeah. eighty five plus with magic res three, so it's quite difficult to uh, to to kind of kill. Yeah, As you can't just lob. Uh, you can't just cast magic missiles at it and try and get it off. It's not going to be yeah. that easy. For yeah. three hundred and thirty points, it's like I think it's a solid choice. Would yeah. you ever take just one of them though? I've, I've taken one before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think two, two is probably fine as well. Three is a bit overkill, and as you say, you you're kind of designing your army in a certain way if you're taking three. But I think one is fine. Like it's a bit of fun. You never know if you're just like one shot a, a dragon or something with a stone. True, and people have to take that into consideration. I'm not sure. I'm not, I don't think it's likely the best kit pick, but I think it's one of those like hidden gem things that are better yeah. than you might think. I've yeah. never actually tried it, to be fair. So <laughs> uh, maybe I'm being harsh to it. I, think I should probably give him a go at some point. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. a toss between him and the Jabberwock, but I have a little soft spot for the Jabberwock. <laughs> yeah, I figured that would be your gem pick, but let's get that. <laughs> um... All right, so um, I couldn't really think of a of a good uh, good bad pick, <laughs> um, but I, I uh, d decided to, for the the centaurs in the end, which I think yeah. they are. I, I mean, they are are of course popular. I, I know some people use them, um, and I faced them a few times, but I've never been that that impressed with them. They are. They are so fragile. <laughs> I agree uh, with you, Brad. All right. Um, I mean, they, they are like a, a super last ca cannon, I, I suppose. So uh, if you have the tools to take them out, then they are worthless. Um, but if the opponent doesn't, then they, they're going to rock, <laughs> rock, rock around and do uh, kill everything. Yeah, yeah, if they have any sort of shooting or missiles, then they're dead, aren't they? They're just not going to do anything. Yeah. The, the last, last time I played against them, um, there was a, a centaur chieftain in the unit as well, who was really not nasty, had this um, this throwing weapon thing, uh, throwing spear. But I, 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 I was really scared of the unit, but I managed to distract it with a single Varkulak the entire game. Um, <laughs> and in, in the end they charged the Varkulak and uh, uh, the Varkulak killed the Chieftain and the unit killed the Varkulak so I was pretty happy with that trade-off <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm not that impressed by them um, to say I, I think they're great especially with if you go like busting it up with a couple of Chieftains Yeah, I think they're really good As, for me where they where they fall short is that like I can't seem to pass discipline tests with them <laughs> Uh, yeah. How do you find their uh, their uh, drunk card rule? Is it is it useful? I always, I always forget to declare it at the at the wrong time. Like I'm like <laughs> oh fuck, I'm, I, I didn't I didn't say when I charged, but I wanted them to be drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. I think I think it's pretty. It's very nice to kind of have the option to to like move around with light troops and then be drunk and be scoring and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. It's it's just like a really w a good way of being having like a very versatile choice before the game, which I, which I like. Yeah, yeah, I I I agree. Those those types of choice choices um, that you can make 
like at the start of the game, I, I really liked those. So. Um, so. All right. Um, shall we move on to the gems then? Yes. Do, you, do you have another pick <laughs> now that your yours was uh, hijacked, Henry? Um, let's go for the Central Chief. All right. I think they're really good. Like you don't need to invest a lot of uh, like points in equipment and stuff like that because they're fairly glass cannony, but they're still resilience five. Yeah. And even on their own, they can do a lot of work because they rerolled the hit and. They're fast and they can also ambush. Yeah. yeah. I think there's a lot of options there for the Centaur Chiefs. And they can have that nasty throwing weapons weapon that I have, hate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what uh, equipment do you normally give them, Henry? Uh, always give them throwing weapons. <laughs> because two strength five shots is good. Yeah. And usually they get like a mixture of paired weapons or great weapons or... I've actually given one um, a great weapon with blessed inscriptions before and just run around. So like reroll to hit, reroll to wound with divine attacks. Pretty nice. Sounds, yeah. a, sounds a bit expensive though, but... Uh... I don't think it's that expensive. Yeah. Um, let me just have a quick look. Central Chieftain is 200 points. Uh, great weapon is 20. And... Throwing weapons are five, so that's <laughs> or, okay. Th throw weapons that definitely sound like a like an auto include then. Yeah, <laughs> like you're paying two hundred and thirty, and then I'm not sure how much the less inscriptions is, but it's sounds like sixty-five. Yeah, so it's less than three hundred points for a character that can do quite a lot. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, no, the the I I, I I sounds like a good good gem pick for sure. Um can do a lot of work um yeah do you ever give him any defense or anything henry the like armor mm, no nah. <laughs> <laughs> they're on their, on their own <laughs> yeah i mean they're really five and they've got three hit points so yeah it, it just it depends like if just don't use them in a stupid way <laughs> don't, throw them, don't throw them into stuff they can't deal with I think they're fairly fairly resilient. Uh, do you do you have to have a, a unit of uh, centaurs uh, if you run them? No. No. no uh, like from from a tactical point of view, uh, I mean, uh, um, it's, it's it's viable. I think it helps. Yeah. But I think in certain in certain matchups you're probably fine without. Yeah. That's true. All right. Um. So, what about your 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 pick, Kev? My gem pick will be another character. It's got to be the Soothsayer, but in a particular build with Shamanism and uh, Trickster's Cunning, which means in combat you're wounding him on a five up and you've got to re-roll successful wounds. So, it just makes him an absolute tank and he can uh, just takes people by surprise if they've got cowboys and stuff. They go charging into his unit. He'll uh, quite happily stand there and take that one. Can you explain the combo, Kev? Sorry? Can you explain the combo? Yeah, so when Shamanism gets spell off, your attribute means that you can only be wounded on a five up or better. Yeah. Um, all the time. Uh, oh, no, in combat only, that is, actually. I mean, he's res five anyway, so he's already quite resilient. But putting yeah. that in just means he's extra tough to wound, especially for some uh, really tough characters. Yeah. And then the tricks with Collins and armor enchantment, which means you have to re-roll successful to wound rolls. So as you're wounding on a five up, and then you've got to re-roll your successful <laughs> one. Yeah, that's nice. It it really does make him quite tough to kill. It does mean he can't have an Aegis save or anything. Well, he could have an Aegis if you give him the uh, Talisman of Shielding as well to make him even more resilient. <laughs> um, but I sit him just in a unit of Wildhorn. Um, and also give him Ancestral Carvings, which is a weapon enchantment. Uh, gives him plus two strength, plus two attack, and distracting. Ooh. So minus <laughs> one to hit him, plus all yeah. the wounding shenanigans, and it gives him three attacks to strength five, so he can still hit stuff back. And obviously he gets the primal instinct, so he's re-rolling to hit. So uh, yeah, I, I really like him. I've had a lot of fun using him actually. I mean, it does catch people off. It's nice to have a wizard that isn't a complete pushover. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I definitely support that pick. I, I have a fairly similar build that I use in Ox and Goblins, um, like tooling up a, a, a wizard with shamanism, and you can get something pretty nasty that can tank yeah. enemy characters quite well. Um, so yeah, I like that. Yeah, it's nice not to have to hide him in, you know, skirmishing unit and stuff like that yeah. to uh, be able to yeah. use him quite good. Yeah. It's shaming it's just a great lore anyway. Yeah. I guess he could do the Longhorn and actually go into combat. Yeah, he could do. Yeah. I'm quite, I'm quite enjoying the Wildhorn, actually. I've always uh, had a bit of a soft spot for them in the core choice, because obviously it's between sort of them and Mongrels. Um, but yeah, I think the Wildhorn aren't too bad at Res 4. I mean, they're only strength free, so they can't really dish it out. But it takes a decent unit to take them down. Yeah, they can definitely hold a unit up, right? Yeah, exactly. They'll be steadfast for a while as well because they're just so cheap. So you can take big units of them. Do you, would you take them as paired weapons or with hand weapon shield? Um, I normally take them hand weapon and shield if I'm taking a big block. When I'm ambushing, on, I'll take paired weapons of weapons. They can pick what they want to fight. Then at least uh, throwing weapons are a must on any sort of ambushing wild horn unit. You yeah. absolutely have to take that. Yeah, I face quite quite, quite a lot of the always pretty good choice. Yeah. But the 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 ambushing wild horns, I face quite a lot of those and man those are annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Show up and and yes, throw something to death and, and then charge and are, yeah, just messing up everything. Uh, well normally I fought Dread Elves recently and bought them on uh threw my weapons at the what are called Legionnaire, no the auxiliaries, did nothing. <laughs> And they turned around and wiped out a unit of 18 in one round of shooting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess that can happen I wasn't too. Expect, I know they had a lot of shots, but I wasn't expecting to wipe them out to a man. So <laughs> <quite something> special. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, okay, so for my pick... Um... In gem, and this is uh, again like a co complete guess, but it's it's something that I faced a, a few times and I've been struggling with, and that's a mongrel block with a minotaur character in it. Yeah. Um. They they, they have bodies for days, so you're not gonna break them uh, th through in a prolonged combat because the minotaur fights so well that you're just gonna lose combat instead. Um, and if if you do do manage to win, they are steadfast, uh, for sure. Um, and even the mongrels with spears um, and and their primal instinct, they do plink in some wounds every now and then, uh, especially with, with some magic support. Um, so that that's a unit I've faced um, and really struggled with. Um, the the most recent game I um, I tricked it into charging my my barrow guard. They failed the friend the, the friends test of the of the uh, minotaur character, and I thought, oh, oh this is great! I'm gonna my elite unit against his his puny core unit and. The, Five <laughs> combat turns later, my uh, Barragard were almost wiped out, and then I managed to flank charge with my general and, and raise the Barragard back up. <laughs> but it took like half my army to kill that unit. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Um, those... yeah. Get the banner of the wild herd on there as well. They can be strength four. Yeah. And with spears, it's AP3. They can be really good. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. He didn't have that, fortunately. <laughs> um... But yeah, um, it's a unit I strugg struggled with. Yeah, I've not tried running them yet, but I probably will at some point because yeah, they're just solid. They're so cheap as well. Yeah, maybe that's your answer Kev, to the mongrel problem. Like you don't, if you don't want them in the unit of mongrels, maybe try them in mongrels. Yeah, unit of mongrels. You feel you got to worry about is cannons, but there's not a great deal of them knocking about these days. No, no, it really isn't. <laughs> uh, I tried th throwing a um, a silver spike at it and did two wounds to the uh, to the Minotaur, uh, but then Druidism he was back up again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, even that didn't work. Um, all right, I think we're out of picks. Uh, but um, of course, if there's anything and anything else we want to mention about the rules we can for sure do that uh, do you have any 
final thoughts? Oh, there's just there's a load of good units. There's a load of good like sleeper units. The Razor Tusk her just on their own, you know, some res five free wound piece of chaff, and it's just amazing. Yeah, I, I use it as well. I love it. But yeah, I'm a big fan of them. The only issue is their discipline, so you got to kind of keep them around the general and stuff. But that that they could be really good, and they're not just chaff as well. If you get them in combat, they can really hurt. You know, if yeah. you if get them as support in another unit charging, they're awesome. Yeah, I, I think the, the beast hearts are not starred for good chef, chef for so, sure. Between all the chariots, the the, the Razor Task card, as you said, said, and the gargoyles. The gargoyles are just amazing, chef, as well. Yeah. They're fantastic. And they, they too, can fight quite a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Strength four, two attacks, and, and primal instinct. Um, They, they uh, dish it out, for sure. Uh, I've had gi- giants felled by, by, by gargoyles, so. <laughs> I think the greatest ones my unit killed is the uh, Omen of Savar. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't like no, non magical attacks. Yeah. So that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. All right. What about you, Henry? Any. I think a lot of the magic items are really nice. You kind of mentioned the Hawthorne curse before. I think it's quite fun to run around and bolt throw things. Yeah. Um, I like the Fatal Folly Beast Axe where you, uh, every run, every roll of a one, you get an extra attack. Or these kind of things. I think there's a lot of like nice items in there. As Kevin said, the um, with the Soothsayer with the whatever it's called, the uh, the stick. <laughs> ancestral carvings yeah that's that's quite cool there's like lots of ni- nice little items in there that uh, are quite fun yeah and that, that, yeah, that, that that's really always like excuse, excuse me they've got a really good magic item section I think actually yeah. there's a lot of good choices in there and I think that's a really important thing to make a, a, a faction fun to play that you have some some of those unique items to play around with, um, so that's good. I say, even though I've been using them for a year, I'm still not bored of them yet, because um, there's so many options I've not even tried in the book, particularly the magic item section. There's tons of different things I want to try out. Yeah, nice. And even the hereditary isn't as bad as people say. It has, <laughs> if people say it's the worst hereditary in the game. It gives terror, right? Yeah, exactly. So if you're, if you're actually against an army that is susceptible to fear and terror, it can be great. At least as a hereditary, you can so you don't have to take it. Yeah. Um, so it's quite nice for that. And also because you, the army, I find struggles against things that cause fear. It can be quite nice to make a unit fearless and not have to worry about that. Yeah, as a, as we mentioned with the with the um, the Longhorns, one of the weaknesses is the lack of fear, fearless. Yeah, so that's a good way to counter it for sure. So yeah, you know, don't knock it till you try it. <laughs> okay, then I think we've given a pretty good o- overview of the whole faction. Yeah. Um. So to wrap this up, uh, how's your painting been going? Going. Pretty good. Um, almost finished actually with the samurai guy. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, nice. Some blue armor. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Sweet. just slapping down some base coats at the moment, so. I can't really see the light there. Uh... So, yeah, yeah, he's just yeah. getting some base coats on him. Doing four at once, so. Which I always tend to do. Do you do batch painting, or do you prefer to just do one model at a time? Uh, a little bit of each. Um, at the moment, I'm doing uh, one at a time, though I switch around halfway. Uh, halfway. Uh, but um, I do some batch painting, like um, base coats and stuff, and then I do detailed work one by one of them. Yeah, that's pretty much how I do it as well. I do do I do all the base coats in batch, and then finish off with the. One by one. Yeah. Um, 
So for myself, I tend to do batches of five, I think, normally. If I'm doing like, you know, 20 Wildhorn, I'll do four batches of five and just do them all at once. Yeah. It's boring, but it's nice when it's finally finished. Yeah. Yeah. With my my uh, vermin swarm, I uh, made it a similar approach. Um, That's an army I could never do. <laughs> I couldn't fa- face painting that many. I mean, I I I, I love that ty- type of armies. It seems collecting uh, orcs and goblins, uh, vampire covenant, empire, vermin swarm, and now with some I- infantry based uh, uh, terracotta army. <laughs> so, I, lo- I love me some infantry. <laughs> Which colors are you using for your terracotta? Uh, the Watchful Eye Studio. Okay, cool. Uh, never actually painted any of those on uh, on the show. They are uh, they they paint too quick. <laughs> they don't make for good <laughs> show <laughs> show painting. Um, but for myself, I've made a pretty good progress on this uh, cultist guy. Oh, yeah. The sword looks really good. Yeah, it's awesome. Man. Uh, so I, I had I had hoped not to, uh, to 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 work on the other stuff other than the, the non-metallic metal, but uh, I ran out of other stuff, so made some work on the metal as well. Um, but uh, yeah, he's getting there. Um, they are fun for sure. Um, and reminding the audience again, please let us know what you've been painting. painting. Um, and uh, yeah, I think we'll wrap it up at that. Thank you very much for coming on, guys. You're Thank welcome. you for having me. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Um, hoping to see you, see you again sometime here. Um, it's been really nice. Uh, and thank you to, to the audience for listening, those who made it this far. Um, yeah, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Yes, will do. Thank you.